this. Uh, okay. All right, Juan, Bettina, uh, Bobby here. Uh, Juan, if you don't mind, take a couple of minutes to update, all, you know, Bettina and all our, uh, you know, investors on the, this, where we are with the uh, purchase. Um, sure. The latest on the financing, and then uh, secondly, thirdly, maybe on the um, you know the the date on which the investors need to uh, wire their funds into escrow. Sure. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, uh, Bettina, uh, for being here. Um, yes, uh, we are uh, referring to the twenty two ten Elisa Lane. Uh, property in Edinburgh, Texas, the 20 unit uh, multifamily acquisition project. Um, where we're at right now is that we continue to hold the, the property under contract. We have made the first extension for 30 days and we are about to make the next 30 day extension. Why? Because we need the time frame to be sure that we are comfortable with uh, the slot of time for the bank to give us their commitment and be able to close. We have a title company uh, set up. It's, it's a, a title insurance company and escrow agent in one. It's called Edwards Title and Abstract in, um, in uh, McAllen. Uh, our agent there is Mariana Ramirez and we have deposited earnest money to take us to the, the extension where we're at right now. Now, uh, have things changed? Well, maybe in the market, I'll just give you an update from the McAllen Realtors Association, um, the Greater McAllen uh, Association of Realtors. And these are numbers that, that were put out for uh, August 20, uh, 2021. Uh, the, the housing report uh, tells us that the median price going year over year has gone up 8.6% August 2021 from August 2020. That is not as high as it was for July, but it's still uh, high. Active listings have uh, decreased year over year. Again, in July, they were 30.3% less than 2020. In August, they're 21.6% less than 2020. Closed sales went up 4.6% year over year. In July, they were 7.1%. Days on market are very similar. Uh, for July, they were year over year 53, July uh, or 54, and August are 53 days on market. Days to close for July, they were 38, uh, August 34. Total July 82, August 87 days. So that basically hasn't changed much. Um, inventory. Um, in July, it was 2.3%. Uh, and um, in, in August, it remains at 2.3%. So the, the submarket and the market are pretty much the same. It doesn't change, but we do have, uh, uh, I guess, a, a, um, a better outlook in terms of uh, when we put the property contracts mean inventory is still low. There's scarcity of these types of properties. We feel very comfortable with the purchase price at 1.4 million. Um, the rents have been uh, raised some to $750. We will work with the seller so that maybe the broker agent can take some of these leases that are expiring and um, turn them over to $750 even before we close. So that is the status. Um, right now we, had, we have contacted uh, our attorney to start preparing the formation documents for the acquiring LLC, which is gonna be the, the uh, partnership vehicle. Again, Bobby, Bobby and I will be the general partners and all the uh, capital partners, Bettina will be the limited partners. Um, to that end, we will give you before uh, signing a draft of the operating agreement for you to review. 
once we have the company formed, we will go to the bank. Namely, we are talking now to a portfolio local bank. It's called Navy, Army, and Community Credit Union. Once we get the soft uh, terms in place that we can sign on, we're going to open a bank account with them, and then we'll ask you to make your deposits into that account, an account uh, which will be owned by a limited liability company of which you will have uh, share participation. Um, that we expect to happen around October 29. And uh, we would hope that uh, everyone can transfer uh, their own funds uh, to the uh, limited partnership um, um, by November 1st. Uh, after that, we foresee closing uh, on the 7th of November. However, if we don't get signed with the bank this week, um, or next week, it looks like we may take an additional uh, uh, days during November to be able to close. But again, we have gotten our extension, so we're fine with the contract. We still uh, have uh, the right to purchase a property. So we feel very comfortable with that. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, Bettina. If not, uh, we can go over some of the questions that we've received from some of the partners. Yes, I, I, I mean, it's just a, a, for me, it's just logistics moving and not having my computers and not having, uh, I'll, I'll figure out a way to access the paperwork and sign it and make sure I get to the bank on time. But my, <laughs> it'll, it'll all be, uh, only because I'll be in route, you, yeah. you know, uh, during yeah. that week. So, but that's, that's okay. I'll, it'll, you know. it'll all be electronic. So, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, we'll give you plenty of time. So no, okay. no stress, no rush. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Juan, let's see. Yeah, go ahead for the questions from people that have reached out to you. Sure. Um, well, uh, one of the one one question is, you know, when does the preferred return start to accrue? Well, that's immediately. Immediately after we close, your investment uh, preferred return starts to accrue. So, um, on a monthly basis, we have scheduled eight percent preferred return for the LPs. Another question that we've gotten is, when can I expect my first uh, distribution? That would be the first quarter. Um, after closing. Okay, we had thought about doing it on a month to month. It may be too cumbersome just to work with the accountant and the tax uh, um, specialists. Uh, so we may do it uh, on a quarterly basis. Of course, all the reporting will be done uh, uh, regularly. So you're, you're always on, you know, on, on, uh, with, with the current information on hand. Um, one question that came up was whether uh, the LP could invest through the self-directed IRA. Um, for that, we, we always uh, refer um, all our partners to their own tax uh, strategists, accountants, uh, legal counsel for that. However, one question that was asked from the specialist to one of the contributing partners was, is this a loan or is this an investment? Definitely not a loan. It's an investment in the uh, acquisition vehicle. Uh, for that, they usually send out like a package for uh, an investment packet, you know, with information that needs to be distributed. We will uh, provide the operating agreement, agreement, the articles of formation, uh, the EIN, just so that uh, there's support documentation for your investment. If uh, you require um, like a questionnaire, like an investor questionnaire. Um, on on onewaytexas.com, there is a questionnaire set up, set up in place. So you could go through that. Um, uh, we could get that and email it back to you. And that way you could provide to your, um, to your um, IRA specialist uh, with that questionnaire already answered. It's, it, it's on onewaytexas.com. And, um, and there's a questionnaire there on how can I invest? So that should suffice. Uh, just log on to there uh, and we will send that over to you and you can just turn that in. Um, if you need that supporting uh, confirmation uh, or documentation. 
Also, once the investment is done, you may need, some may ask for a confirmation letter. We would certainly uh, provide that just so that, uh, you know, confirming receipt of funds and that you have made the, the, uh, the investment. And then moving forward, it would just be, you know, getting all the reports. Um, another question that has come up is, can I sell my contribution, my share in the, um, in the uh, investment vehicle. Typically on larger deals, you don't see a right to sell. You know, you, you're pretty much go along with the project until exit. This is at the level we'll, where we feel that we could grant uh, uh, everyone the right to exit at any time. You know, life happens to all of us. So if you want to exit, you could sell your participation to streamline that and to make it uh, uh, easier for everyone, especially us as GPs, we would hold a right of first refusal to acquire that and then the rest of the LPs. And I think there would be a, a fee, a fee associated with, with uh, exiting uh, before the, the, the asset is liquidated. Uh, it would be around $1,000. Why? because there's costs associated with doing all the paperwork and turning that over uh, to another contributing partner, and that would need to be covered. Um, will the offering utilize uh, uh, debt financing? Definitely, we are uh, looking to get uh, debt on this. We had under, uh, underwritten for 70% loan to value. Uh, with Navy Army Community Credit Union, that has gone to 78 uh, uh, loan to value, uh, which would probably just generate a bit more of cash flow um, on, on a 25 year amortization. Um, so, pretty much that's it. We sent everyone the pitch deck aside from the market and sub market uh, update. Uh, and that we are in extension, that we have provided more earnest money. Uh, the terms on the loan is, is actually looking good with, with this portfolio bank. There's no balloon payment as we had originally thought with um, Wells Fargo. Another thing that has changed for the good is that the building is, has 100% occupancy. 100% occupancy, which goes back to our uh, uh, the question on when does this accrue and when are the payouts? Well, immediately, you know, with 100% uh, occupancy, we're turning that into cash flow uh, um, from day one. So that's where we're at. Um, Bobby, I don't know if I was thorough with the questions that we've been asked or. I have, are you... I have a couple of the questions. If that's sure. okay. Thanks so much. Yes. So uh, it's an 8% preferred return. Um, have you calculated the true return once you account for a depreciation? Because I'm looking for write-offs. Obviously, you know, typically I invest where the rate of return is a little bit higher. So what, what offsets the 8% in order to, you know, increase yeah. the overall return and then provide the tax benefits? Right, right, Bettina. Well, there, there are two different, uh, benefits associated with the real estate investment. Um, one, the return is directly associated with the cash flow. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. And this is one area in the United States that's still cash flowing and appreciating. So, so a preferred return means that from the cash flow, limited partners uh, take that 8% return before the 70 30 split takes yeah. place right okay now with respect to the benefit from the depreciation uh we are doing a cost segregation study on this building mm -hmm. and that would depend on the outcome on the study itself and how much we can then uh, uh get from the irs on year one understand okay. okay that was my question because we're taking a little bit lower return now or cash flow money wise now for a little bit higher up, yeah. upside later on yeah right let me let me respond by by saying Bettina that that um 
you're not limited to 8%. That means that 8% preferred is the minimum you're going to get before the GPs start seeing something um, um, from, from the cash flow. Uh-huh. Okay. So they, let's say this cash flows at, um, let's just say that it cash flows at 10%. You would get your 8% preferred return. And then on the remaining 2%, let's say it's uh, out of every dollar of that Two percent, you would get seventy cents from that. Okay, all right. Okay. I just need to to know it's like you right. know, do you get more dollars now or do you get more dollars later? So um, that's yeah. I, I when I look at my portfolio, I have Terrific. to kind of balance that out. So. Yeah. No. No. Very valid question. And that wow. um, what are we seeing in terms of the potential of the rent upside? I. I um, from what I was reading, um, there's some increase in rents currently, but where do you see um, the overall pressure for increased rents in that area? I mean, is, are, are rents considering are continuing to accelerate in that area for, uh, as far as demand for housing? One. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the answer is building rents have been at Sorry, I think there's a uh, internet uh, Yes, I'm switching over to uh, I think we 